Good evening. After five years on the run, suspected bomber killer Eric Rudolph is now beginning a journey through the American criminal justice system. The man wanted in the deadly bombing at the 1996 Atlanta Olympics was arrested over the weekend by a rookie cop in North Carolina. Okay, if you're ready, we'll go ahead and get started. How you doing? How are you? Uh, I was on a patrol in the east part of town. Came around the corner, uh, turned my headlights off. It's how you usually proceed around the building. Observed a male subject squatted down in the middle of the road, and he took off running and uh, got in behind some milk crates which were stacked up there. Not knowing who it was or what he had, uh, I took safety into concern and advised him to uh, come out. He complied to everything I asked to do. You captured one of the uh, most wanted fugitives in this country. That's just in a day's work. Uh, don't really deserve any credit. Uh, just doing what I'm, what I was hired to do. Eric Rudolph is no longer phantom, no longer shadow. Finally captured, he's skin and bones and not much more. Assistant U.S. Attorney Jill Rose read aloud all 21 counts against him, which could carry the death penalty. I and most lawyers I know are always looking to get death off the table one way or the other. He, he wasn't at all hesitant about agreeing to plead guilty. While on the way to the courthouse to confess, Officers said Rudolph seemed almost jaunty. Did you do it, the judge asked. I certainly did, said Rudolph, who winked at the jury when he walked in. I believe the first time we saw him was here in town. When they brought him in, he turned and looked at me. Nothing. He you know. is extremely proud of what he did. His only regret is that he didn't kill more people and the right people. But other than that, he's never shown any remorse mm -hmm. about what he did. After his pleas, Rudolph released a letter stating he wasn't an anarchist, but that he committed the bombings to stop abortions. Because I believe abortions are murder, he said, and I also believe that force is justified. Him stating that he performed the Olympic Park bombing because of abortion is a lie. It's a lie. I think it's a very uh, convenient stance to take because he is a murderer and he's looking for a reason to murder without being seen as a villain. A homemade bomb is more than a weapon, it's a statement. And what did Eric Rudolph's bomb say about him? It said that he wanted to kill a lot of people. Eric was full of self-delusion and he still thinks at least when I last spoke to him, that he was correct. Eric Rudolph has admitted that he is guilty of all four bombings in Atlanta and Birmingham. There can be no doubt anymore about who is responsible for these crimes. You finally heard, without any doubt, Eric Rudolph guilty of the Olympic Park bombing. That was when Richard, I think, first felt that he had been vindicated. Richard Jewell could never fully clear his name. He was celebrated for being the hero he was by some people, but some could never believe he didn't have anything to do with it. I don't think anything that happened to me could make someone better, but it would definitely change anyone. To this day, go down to Centennial Olympic Park, there's not a mention of Richard Jewell. I don't suggest that they have to put a statue up they should. Richard Jewell died of heart failure just a few years after he was exonerated completely by Eric Rudolph's confession. And there is no doubt in my mind, having viewed the stress and the physical impact it played on Richard, that this event contributed to his premature, untimely, and tragic death from a heart attack at age 44. I just needed him to know that, whether it matters to him or not. I just needed to say it. Fallon Stubbs is the daughter of Alice Hawthorne, who was killed by the Centennial Park bomb. Eric Rudolph killed her mom, and she stood up as, at his sentencing, and she said, I forgive you. 
as Christians, as humans, we all love each other. And through him, I've learned more tolerance for people who are different from me. Rudolph sat impassively, didn't even look up. Eric Rudolph was sentenced to four consecutive life terms in prison, plus 120 years, without any possibility of parole. Everyone asked me, well, don't you think you should have gotten the death penalty? I think this is what he's going through now is the worst punishment that you could give him. Loving the outdoors the way that he does and him being confined in a concrete room with a concrete bed and a concrete stool, a little sliver of a window. And I think this is the very just punishment that he needs. There's a parallel between Eric's thinking and what is happening today. Just a different, a different avenue. I think there are a lot of Eric Rudolphs out there right now. What makes them killers when there are so many people who believe what they do believe, but never act on it? Here's the key about what they do that will identify them almost every time. They cannot be a member of a group, but they never lose the desire for it. The big change in the last 20 years has been social media. It can provide a source of identity for these people without actually having to deal with the groups that they're not able to become a part of. How do we stop the lone offenders? You can only on an individual basis look at behavior and look at the outliers, notice the outliers, and report them when you can.